Now joined by my colleague Krishna Kumar, who has a new guest with him, Rajiv Kumar, the Vice Chairman of Niti Aayog. Over to you, Krishna. Thank you, Ramesh. Uh, we're now being joined by Mr. Rajiv Kumar, Vice Chairman of uh, Niti Aayog. Uh, Mr. Rajiv Kumar, thank you so much for taking time out to be with us here on We Own World is One on this very important day. Uh, it's the budget before the elections, uh, and uh, right at the outset, uh, there is. How is the Josh that's being bandied about, especially with the uh, film Uri doing well? And uh, this is a question of how is the Josh when it comes to uh, the government and its, uh, this budget seems to have delivered on the Josh front. But the question always is whether we, it will deliver on the jobs front. Well, I mean, of course it will deliver on the job front. It will more than deliver on the job front. Because as you can see, the budget is geared to... Uh, geared to really give a good boost to economic activity in the in the country, uh, it's a, it will it has increased the disposable income both in the urban and the rural sector. Uh, in the in the rural sector by giving the direct ben, direct income transfers to the farmers, and in the urban sector by helping the middle class uh, in, in, by reducing the by introducing the tax rebate for all those whose incomes are below five lakhs, and then giving also the uh, you know higher interest rate. Uh, uh, you know, some interest rate exemptions up to 40,000 rupees and uh, capital gains uh, relaxation up to two crores. So all in all, you see, it's a, it's a budget which will boost consumption activity and therefore economic activity and give, give uh, real, real reinforcement uh, to the investment uh, that in future because now you will need capacity expansion in the economy to meet this consumption demand and therefore there will be once you get investment going, you will get jobs going. And I think this is where uh, the, the, the growth in jobs will come. And the finance minister, as you would have noticed, was at pains to say that the one lakh digital villages, for example, that they have been created will give a boost to the jobs. Uh, it, it also the fact that you got a huge expansion in infrastructure outlay, that will give a boost to the jobs. And then there are, re there are measures to boost the uh, real estate sector. You know, which is in terms of uh, you know the the uh, notional rental income for up to two houses being exempt from income tax, the builders being allowed two years instead of one year uh, for, uh, for you know for the vacant for the un, un, unoccupied uh, you know premises etc. So the real estate sector will also uh, get 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 a, get a leg up, and as you as you know the real estate sector is a huge employment generator. So all in all, I expect this budget to be a real job. Uh, creator uh, in the year to come. All right. Uh, at this stage, I'm going to pull out the NSSO report that came just before the budget that said that uh, unemployment rate in India is at a 45-year high. Immediately after that report came out, uh, uh, the government got into damage control mode. They rejected the report, saying that it's not complete. It needs to be processed. Uh, you know, help us understand where exactly is the job scenario in India currently. Well, as, as, uh, as uh, you know, I, I, I hope you saw that my, our CEO, Amitabh Kant, and I addressed a press conference yesterday on exactly the same subject. And Amitabh was very clear that there are three narratives on the job front at the moment going on in this country. And the most, um, the most viable narrative is one in which it is clear that there are enough jobs having been created in the services sector, you know, things like the Ola, Uber, the delivery people, the e-commerce, uh, all of that. There are jobs being created in the health sector, in the medical sector, and, and there are a large number of jobs being created in the digital economy, which are perhaps not being captured in the data that we have. And, and you know for a fact that the Niti Aayog has, has said that the report is still in draft situation, is not final. So, but Mr. Kant was also clear in saying that the quality of the jobs needs to be improved. And while we are creating nearly 7 million jobs a year, as was pointed out by Ghosh and Ghosh looking at the EPFO data, that the, 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 the quality of the jobs may not be meeting the aspirations of our young population and which the government will work towards. And which the government will work towards by improving the digital economy, by improving the agricultural sector and by giving a boost uh, to the manufacturing sector, as was, as was, as was said by the finance minister. So, uh, all in all, you, there is no question at all that we can achieve a 7% rate of growth of the economy 
in real terms, the 7% GDP growth rate without there being jobs created. Because where will the where will, where will the growth come from? Because also it has been the it has, you, you know also that the credit offtake from the commercial banks had not been increasing for the last four years. The investment to GDP ratio has been lower than what it has been in the past. So job, jobs don't drop from the sky. Jobs need employment. Jobs need you know employment generation, and that is why. Anybody who says that there are job losses in the economy with a 7% rate of growth in real terms and 11% in nominal terms, I think is just not uh, is just not being being rational, if you like. So there have been enough jobs created, but what we what we accept is that the quality of the jobs needs to be improved. Right. Um, yes. You answered part of my question, but the other part is obviously about growth and what this budget does in terms of growth. The growth estimate was revised by the government just a day before the budget to 7.2 percentage from the previous 6.7 percentage. If you can help us understand what exactly uh, you know is giving uh, you know the government the confidence uh, that growth will be better than what was originally estimated. No, but that that revision has has happened for. The year 2017-18, and so therefore that that doesn't concern the year 2019-20 for which the budget has been proposed, and Fair that enough. was done by the CSO because always, always as in the and the past, GDP figures, GDP growth figures have been revised, and this is what they have done, and this is something which is a bit of a routine. But we are of course interested in growth going forward, and the growth going forward, I think the estimates are that it'll in 1920. The fiscal year, which is coming up, uh, coming up on us, the GDP growth rate will be a minimum of 7.3 percent. I think with the budgets, the, with the measures that have been announced in the budget, and which are more likely to come, likely to come again in the July 2019 budget, I expect a growth rate which will touch nearly 8 percent in 2019-20. And I think this is the beginning of a, a sweet period for the Indian economy. We are already the fastest growing economy in the world, but but, but I, I can assure you. But the the way I look at it is that with the investment now beginning to rise, with the commercial bank, with the commercial banks coming out of their worst spot, with the insolvency and bankruptcy code uh, taking effect and taking roots, deep roots in the system, all the structural reform that we've done, including the GST, we are set for an eight percent GDP growth rate, if not higher, in the coming years. Right. Uh Mr. Rajiv Kumar, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you is the big announcements as, that was part of this budget, and also the fact that this was meant to be an interim budget. This could have just been a vote of accounts as well, but it ended up being nearly a full-fledged budget. That's what uh, you know uh, people are saying. Is is nowhere near a full 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 budget. I think the finance minister has stuck to the propriety of the convention. There is, by the way, there is nothing in the law. Which will prevent the government from preventing a full full budget if they wanted to, but there has been a convention in which the finance minister has respected very well that it is an interim budget. For example, there are no proposals for tax reforms anywhere. The excise rates, the the, the import duty rates, the even the direct tax rates going forward have not been touched or have not been announced. He has not announced any slew of measures for touching the manufacturing sector or the industrial sector, etc. The only two. Uh, you know, substantive announcements, as it were, were one for the farmers, the power package that was announced, and two for those whose incomes are below five lakhs. Now, those two segments of the population needed urgent handling, needed urgent uh, addressing their their, their 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 troubles, needed to be uh, urgently addressed. So, which is what he has done in this budget. So, it is very much an interim budget. Uh, the finance minister has been totally, uh, you know, very much uh, stuck to the propriety of the con- of the convention. And you will get a full budget, hopefully being presented by the same government in July 2019. Among the big announcements made as part of this interim budget, as you call it, uh, is the fact that the pension scheme, the mega pension scheme, is a is a, is a, is a first of its kind initiative. It involves a huge outlay. It's meant to give pension of 3,000 rupees to uh, to workers in the unorganised sector, you know. And this is a big move. Uh, at the same time. Uh, in this budget, where you have big, many big moves, apart from this one, apart from this, you have the six thousand rupees cash being handed out to farmers. The fiscal deficit continues to grow wider. The fiscal deficit. Let me first. Uh, let me first answer your first question. 
which are the, if you if you if you've uh, looked at the budget, the, to, the allocation for the uh, Shram Mandhan uh, Yojana, the, the the pension scheme for workers in the unorganized sector, which is supposed to be benefiting 10 crore of the 42 crore which are engaged in the unorganized sector, the, the total allocation for the year is only rupees 500 crore. And that is because the government will only match the amount that is being put by the workers toward the scheme. Uh, as, as the finance minister announced, if the worker joins the pension scheme at the age of 18, he will have to put in rupees 55 per month. And those who join 10 years later, at the age of 29, will have to put in a rupees 100 per month, and the government will match that. So it's not as if the 3,000 rupees per month after the age of 60 will come entirely from the government. No, it's, 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 a, it's a funded scheme. And also, it's a, it's a scheme which will, take, which will give the benefit to the workers when they reach the age of 60. Now, it's a big scheme, but the financial, the fiscal implication of that are not that high. Uh, coming then to the fiscal, uh, you know, fiscal prudence, fiscal balance, you know, uh, I believe uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi has said that 6,000 rupees per year is nothing at all because it translates to 17 rupees per day uh, for the farmer. Now, you know, if it was the... If it was the Congress government as in the past, they could have thrown fiscal prudence to the wind and they could have let the fiscal deficit drip. But nothing of that kind has happened in this, in this budget. And the fiscal deficit has been maintained at 3.4%, which is actually just 3.1% if you take out the farmer's package of 75,000 crore. So we are very much on the fiscal consolidation path. And by 22-23, we'll reach 3% of fiscal deficit as has been, as has been the target. Also, interestingly, as part of this uh, uh, entire budget, uh, the, there's, a, there's a big bet being made on the aviation sector as one that could uh, provide a huge number of jobs going forward. No, absolutely. I mean, uh, as, 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 you, as, as you must have noticed, uh, the number of domestic passengers flying in the country has doubled, has more than doubled in the last five years. The number of airports is now more than 100. Uh, there are, I believe, 600 planes on order by different airlines going forward. So domestic, domestic, uh, uh, civil, uh, domestic aviation is a sector which is rising the fastest anywhere in the world. The rate of growth is about 18%. So you will expect this sector, as you will expect, by the way, the transport sector in general uh, to, to provide a huge impetus to, the, to employment generation, uh, plus also to economic activity. So not just not just the civil aviation, but also uh, you know, but also the railways, which has got a capital budget of one lakh fifty six thousand crores, the highest probably the highest ever in railway budget's history. So that's going to expand as well, as well as the transport sector, which has got a total budget allocation of more than a lakh and forty thousand crore. So the infrastructure sector, including civil aviation, railway transport, highways, etc., will be huge job creators in the year to come, in, the, in, the, in this year and in the years to come. You know, the, 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 the beauty about this budget is that it, is a ba it, is, it, is got a, it has achieved a wonderful balance between fiscal prudence on the one hand and giving a boost to economic activity on the other. And I think this to which the finance minister should be complimented. And one last thing. Yes, the outlay is fantastic. Some of the, some of the plans are wonderful. Uh, yeah. But uh, Mr. Rajiv Kumar, you know that... Uh, in, at the end of the day, it's all going to be about the implementation because there is a big question mark when it comes to implementation of big reforms by this particular government. I'm, I'm not sure where this is coming from because this government in particular has shown a huge implementation and project execution capability. You don't distribute six crores of LPG cylinders without being able without having a very good implementation mechanism. Uh, you don't do, uh, how much is it, 163 crore of LED bulbs without implementation. Uh, you don't do <coughs> uh, Swachh Bharat uh, constructing more than 9 crore uh, toilets in the country without good implementation. And you don't open more than 30 crore bank accounts without proper implementation. You know, so this the, the good project execution and implementation is one of the strongest suits of this government. This government has actually demonstrated that it doesn't just, you know, believe in rhetoric, but it actually follows up whatever it says with implementation right. on the ground. So I can assure you that when this government comes back to office, 
we will see enough. better implementation than ever before. Mr. Rajiv Kumar, yeah, Vice you. Chairman of Niti Aayog, joining us here on Beyond World is One. Thank you so much for taking time out to be with us here.